Ladies and gentlemen, Valorant just got released today, and there's a huge patch, patch 1.0, that greatly changed a lot of the heroes in the game, and even added a brand new hero in Reyna. So we have to break down a brand new tier list, so that you know what the best character is going into the full release of Valorant, and you know exactly what characters you could pick up and start grinding. If you like Valorant news, Valorant content, or just want to improve a Valorant, smash that sub button, but enough talking. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? So kicking it off with the S tier, and these are characters that cannot be replaced by anything else in the game. In a nutshell, they're unique and irreplaceable, and that's what makes them in the S tier. So kicking it off with the first hero, the best hero in the entire game, we have Jet. You see, Jet is simply pound for pound the best. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm actually joking about that one. I'm sorry if I debated you, but the actual best hero is something that you're probably not gonna wanna hear. Even after a heal nerf of 35 seconds to 45 second cooldown, even after a previous slow orb nerf, even after a barrier nerf from 1000 HP to 800 HP, even after a barrier duration nerf from 40 seconds to 30 seconds, Sage is still the best character in the game. The fact of the matter is, she is just irreplaceable in what she does. She is not someone that I could see being sad to have in any composition, and I would be very sad to not have her on my team. Until we get another healer that heals other team, not like Reyna that just heals herself, or provides the level of utility like wall and slow, Sage will be MVP. Like I said, she's unique and irreplaceable. Now we only have one more character in the S tier that is also unique and irreplaceable in my mind, and that is Cypher. There is no huge changes for him in patch 1.0, but he is just extremely good at what he does, and in high play, he is definitely essential. He can permanently hold sightlines in a way no one else can. He can guard entire points by himself or even gather information on multiple points. He can stop flanks, make plays. On some maps, he can dominate a whole site. And really, the big takeaway here is that he changes the whole direction of the game. When you're up against a good Cypher, the whole way you play the game is fundamentally different. Cypher just has that power level where the whole temple and the axis that the game is played on completely changes when up against a good Cypher, which means that Cypher brings something to the table that no one else does, and as such, he is the other irreplaceable S tier candidate. Now moving on to the A tier, we're going to talk about characters that are the best at what they do. First off, we're going to jump into Breach. He has incredible zoning capabilities and incredible flashes. His flashes are consistent and easy to use. He has abilities to punish people that are holding certain zones, like holding behind a box. He could flush them out with his damage. Or holding behind the corner, he could flash them or stun them. He has a zoning ultimate. Breach is just such an insane character, and if you have a good Breach on your team and you can coordinate with them, you're going to get so many kills, and you even can decentivize enemies from playing zones that they normally would, which changes the axis of the game in the same way that I talked about with Cypher. Breach is just so powerful, and if you need a character to play and you want to get a lot of kills, definitely pick up Breach. Now moving on to the next character that's the best at what they do, we got to talk about Brimstone. Brimstone smokes are still incredibly easy to use and incredibly powerful. Getting three in a round, allowing you to smoke off entire sections of the map, that is so powerful for team play and coordinated plants. Brimstone just brings so much to the table. On top of that, his stim beacon is very powerful in some circumstances. His molly is very good at zoning people away or basically flushing people out of corners. And his ultimate can literally win you close games because you can potentially ult a spike diffuse or potentially ult choke points to create space. Brimstone's just such a good character that I think he would be a great asset to any team, and if you want to be a character that fills the role for your team, brings a lot to the table, provides a decent amount of utility, Brimstone's the character for you. Now the next character we have in the A tier is Sova, and while Sova is an information gatherer in the same way Cypher is, Sova can gather information far better on attack. If you learn all the rollouts for his recon arrow, plus his drone, Sova can set up a big sense of direction for your team. He can be the playmaker, the shot caller. He can set up information, allow your team to make aggressive plays on the enemy. Cypher, unfortunately, gets a lot worse on attack as opposed to Sova. While Sova's not as powerful as Cypher is on defense, Sova brings a fair amount of aggressive information to the table and can allow a character like Breach to shine with his pop flashes and his ability to basically turn information into action on attack. Sova is a great character for that, and he's one of the best characters in the game. Now, moving on to the lax character on the A tier, this one might surprise you, and it's Omen. Omen is one of the best at what he does in the dueler category, in my opinion. See, Omen just got a ton of buffs. He got buffs to his quality of life. Now he can throw his orbs very easy. Now he can use his paranoid at close range. There's just a lot that they added to the hero, but the biggest change in my mind is his ult chain. What you can now do with this ult is you can actually teleport onto a side of the map, and when you're in your ethereal form, you can choose to cancel it or commit. 
Now, of course, you're going to cancel it if someone's just waiting to kill you, but you can also use it to gather information as well. And the big question that you might be asking is, why would I put Omen in the A tier if he doesn't frag as good as some other characters on the list like Reyna, Jet, Raze in a straight up 1v1? Well, Omen can provide these insane flanks that can definitely get kills, but the biggest takeaway for me here is Omen brings so much value to your team, even if he's not fragging. While he definitely has the capability to frag, flank, and make these insane plays, because of his long smoke that's easier to use now, because he can check multiple sites with his ultimate, and in addition to all the quality of life changes that just make him so much smoother to play, I really think that Omen's gonna be a great character that you could play on a team, and the cool thing is he almost overlaps with Utility and a Dueler all in one. If you played Omen with a Brimstone, you could potentially smoke off an entire point. And then Omen could make an aggressive flank play to secure space on site. There's just so much potential with this hero. And I really think that he's going to be a great addition to any team. Especially because you could fill him out as a fifth member of a team. And he still provides so much utility. Now moving on to the next section on our list, the B tier. And this is solid additions to every team. These characters are extremely good. Unfortunately, there might be other characters that do their job a little bit better or provide a little bit more but these characters are great and don't think that i think these characters are bad because they're not they just have some characters that might be bringing a little bit more than them in other regards so the first character in the b tier is phoenix now the only thing that's keeping phoenix down is that he's in breach's shadow breach just does so much and phoenix brings a different amount of value to the table but as far as pop flashing is concerned breach just does it better pound for pound now, Phoenix just got some buffs. His wall actually is from 6 seconds to 8 seconds, and his flash lasts quite a bit longer, all the way up to 1.1 seconds if you get hit by it. So Phoenix is going to be better in those regards, and on top of that, his ultimate got changed where he automatically reloads his weapons after his ultimate. These are all quality of life changes for Phoenix, and I do think that Phoenix is very good in some regards. I do think that Phoenix is one of the best flankers because of the fact that when he trades out, he can actually heal himself. Unlike Breach, Breach wants to take incredibly clean engagements and not scrappy fights, well, Phoenix gets to potentially heal himself all the way up to full and take full team fights, which is definitely a mark in Phoenix's favor. I definitely think if you're an insanely good Phoenix player, you could probably get more value than a Breach player, but you have to be willing to put in the time and effort into mastering Phoenix. But I do think he's a great character here, and I think he's one of the characters that is actually pretty close to perfectly balanced right now. Now, moving on to the next character we have on our list, we have Raze, and she's good for a number of reasons. She brings a lot of zoning value to your team. She has a lot of zoning with her paint shells. She has a Roomba to get information. She has her blast packs, which unfortunately recently got nerfed, but they still allow her to have the same level of self movement, which I think is the best aspect of her blast pack in the first place. Raze is still going to be a great character in the right hands. If you know the spam spots and you're really good with them, Raze can bring a lot of value to the table. That being said, with an increasing amount of players, at least in the beta, learning how to play around or bait out utility of Raze, Raze has gotten less free value than she did right off the bat. But with all the new players coming into the game, Raze might get some free value even more so, so it's kind of hard to describe. It might just become like the higher tiers of play when rank mode comes out. Raze is a lot worse than at the lower tiers intrinsically. Now moving on to the last B tier candidate, and it's actually the new hero, Reyna. Now, Reyna could be extremely higher than this or lower than this, but until she proves otherwise, she's going to remain in the B tier. We broke it down multiple times on this channel, so if you want to know her full abilities, definitely go check it out. But the big takeaway for you about this hero is that she's an all or nothing champion. Two of her abilities require her to be fragging in order to use them, and the other abilities literally only allow her to frag even easier. So she's literally a character that is all centered around fragging. If she can start getting kills, she can be unstoppable because she can go invincible after kills to prevent getting traded out or swing trades. Or if she takes a straight up 1v1, she can use the orbs that are dropped to heal herself so that she could take straight up 1v1s consistently. Basically, she has higher highs than anyone in the entire game with the ability to legitimately ace if you are better than the other team. That is insane to think about. If you're the best player in the lobby, you have more carry potential on Reyna than any other character in the entire game. But the flip side to that is she has lower lows than anyone else, meaning that at her worst, she does zero to help her team besides feed and die. She is the definition of an all or nothing hero. You thought Jet was all or nothing, this character is even worse than that in the all or nothing category, but I have to put her in the B tier here because like I said, her highs are going to be some of the biggest highs and you're going to see some streamers and insane players pop off with this hero and just have an insane KD, like 30 kills and like three deaths or something like that. Probably not, but you get the point. Reyna is an incredible character in the right hands, but at worst, the worst liability on your team. And moving on to the C tier, these two characters, frankly, they need some buffs. And in a lot of respects, the developers have actually stated they need some buffs. 
So Viper is the first character on this list, and this might make some of you upset, but hear me out here. Viper is a character that I think could be amazing in the right hand. The problem is you have to work so hard for that value that other characters bring so freely. Sage, Brimstone, Omen, so many other characters bring tiers of utility that Viper can't match in her current state it's set by the best of players. If you are looking for a character to learn, that being said, I might suggest Viper because the developers have already stated that they agree that she's underpowered and they are working actively on huge buffs for her that will come down the pipeline, but they didn't want to release it for the release of the game. So if you want to put the time in now where there's no ranked mode for two weeks, you can get good at Viper in time for the Viper changes to go through, but we don't quite know what those changes are. So they could be something not that big, or it could be something that slingshots Viper all the way up to the A or S tiers. Now moving on to the last character that all of us hate to love, it's Jet. Now Jet did get some buffs. Her Cloud Smoke went from 4 seconds to 7 seconds, and now she could tailwind through trap wires and break them, only getting temporarily revealed and not getting slingshotted back. Now the thing about these buffs is their surface level in my mind. The smoke is insanely hard to use and lasts less than both Omen and Brimstone smoke. So they're harder to use with the quality of life changes for Omen, they're very much harder to use than his, and Brimstone's is so easy to use. And Jet, you have to curve them to get exactly where you want to, and they're not really that big, and they don't last as long. The big takeaway here is these changes don't fundamentally fix the flaws of Jet. She needs really sizable buffs if you want to see her compete with the value that the other frags, especially the new hero Reyna, bring to the table. Think about Reyna for example, a character that I only put in B tier. She's an all or nothing champion, but she has invincibility if she gets a kill, and she has a heal that can allow her to basically become a full fighting force or even overheal all the way up to 150 HP. Now compare these abilities to an updraft and a dash, where the updraft can bring you onto the high ground that can be useful in some scenarios, but the dash only sometimes saves you from danger. Oftentimes if there's two enemies and you kill one and dash away, sometimes you'll take a whole bunch of damage or even die, and Reyna is literally immortal as she gets that kill, or she can heal up and she's not trying to fight people after she traded out with a lot less health than them. Jet, just when compared against the other characters in the game, just really doesn't stack up right now, and she needs some big changes in my mind if she wants to compete with them, and I hope that Riot agrees because I would love this character to be one of the better characters in the game because she's a flagship character and she could be extremely cool and fun to play, but right now, she's a big liability for you and your team. Anyways, if you agree, disagree, or just wanna roast me personally, Type away in the comments down below. If you want to up to date Valorant news, Valorant content, or if you want to improve at Valorant, smash that sub button so that you don't miss out on a single bit of good juicy info. That's all I got for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time.